Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. You know, David was considered to be the greatest of the kings of Israel. He is one of the most prominent figures in the history of the world and among Bible characters. He is also the most famous ancestor of Jesus Christ. Jesus is not called the son of Abraham or the son of Jacob, but he is called the son of David. David was a man after God's own heart, and yet his life was a mixture of good and evil. It was filled with noble deeds, high aspirations, and great accomplishments, and yet it was stained with terrible sins. It is said of David that it is hard to conceive that the man who wrote the 23rd Psalm could do what David did to Uriah. He had him murdered. In the early period of his life, David is mentioned as a man after God's own heart, and I think that is because he never became an an idolater throughout his whole life. He was loyal to the Lord in his testimony and in his worship. Even when he blew it, he knew his God. He knew who his God was. It is also said of David that his most outstanding characteristic was his versatility. In his youth, he was an athlete. It is recorded in 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 36. But David said to Paul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumphilistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. The great thing about we see in the life of David, too, is that God was preparing him for what he had prepared for him. I believe that David knew where his power and strength came from, not himself, but from God. I am sure that he spent many quiet and lonely nights shepherding the sheep, and through this quietness and loneliness, he learned to depend upon his God. That's a great lesson for all of us, to, you know, learn to be quiet before the Lord and just sit without TV and and enjoy the out of doors. You know, it, it would be amazing, actually, maybe, how much we could hear from God if we would quiet our hearts before him. Secondly, David was a fine musician. His reputation was such that he played before the king. He had poetic skill, which is said to have been his highest order, for he wrote some of the greatest masterpieces of spiritual literature, which we get to enjoy today throughout Scripture. No other poetry has been used throughout the history of the church as David's great psalms. He was also an able general and conducted his military campaigns with great success. And as mentioned, he was considered the greatest king of Israel. He displayed wisdom and insight in his administration of government. David, like most of the great men and women of the Bible, go through the ranks of servanthood before they ever reach great leadership positions. What a lesson to learn. You know, we we have to sometimes pay the price to get where God wants us to be. In his early life, he spent much of his time on his father's farm near Bethlehem. He was the youngest of eight sons, and as a shepherd, he showed great courage. He was divinely chosen to succeed King Saul and was quietly anointed by the prophet Samuel. But David had his dark days as well as his bright days. When he was being pursued by King Saul, David leads the perilous life of an outlaw and as a fugitive. But God gave favor to David even though, even through all of his dark times. And after the death of Saul, the tribe of Judah anoints David as king, and he reigns seven years in Hebron. And then later, at the death of Saul's son, David becomes king of all Israel. David had notable events even in his later years. He captured Jerusalem and established the capital there. He brought the ark to Jerusalem. He had great military victories, and his kingdom was enlarged. He commits the great sin against Uriah the Hittite because he wanted Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. 
But then we see in Psalm 51, we see David's great repentance. In David's last days, he appoints his son Solomon as his successor, and he gives Solomon a solemn charge. Now the days of David grew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. What an admonition for young men today and young women. If more fathers and mothers would say, prove yourself a man or prove yourself a young lady. David continues and he keeps the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all of their heart and with all of their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. And this passage of Scripture ends with the death of David. It says, So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. The period that David reigned over Israel was 40 years, 7 years he reigned in Hebron, and in Jerusalem he reigned 33 years. You know, David's character qualities are many, many. He was Israel's versatile king. He was beautiful and handsome, it says. He was ruddy, and he was, you know, it said he, was, he was, uh, had a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at. But he was divinely chosen of God. He was courageous and he's also known as a champion and a great soldier. He was a poet and most importantly his general trend of life was spiritual and he was always led by the, his passion for his God. And lastly, even though he yielded to gross sins in a period of ease when he was rebuked by the prophet Nathan, he repented and confessed his sin. You know, that's one of the things we need to remember is that this ease and luxury we have in this life can sometimes lead us into the idleness of sin. We should be so encouraged, though, by the life of David. God chose him and never left him, even though he sinned. He was forgiven, and he sits today as an example of righteousness and a man who loved God and a man who finished well, even though he sinned in his life. Dearly beloved of God, God has a destiny for you today. When you study the character qualities of the Old uh, Testament saints, uh, men and women, you see that if, God, if they would let God, God always led them to the fulfillment of their destiny that He had for them. Let God fulfill your destiny today. Study the lives of the great men and women of the Old Testament and even of the New Testament and the great men and God that have lived down through history and let God determine your destiny. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.